So I was going through comments on the last couple of videos, and one of them really jumped out at me. It was a younger guy. And he was like, can you do a video on basic power shifting, speed shifting, and how to do a burnout with a manual transmission? And I was like, yes, that's pure brilliance, because this is like archaic knowledge. Who even thinks about this stuff anymore? Now, when I was a kid, anything with you know, real performance cars, all manual transmissions. It was like, yeah, some guys had automatics, but if you really wanted to, you know, to go, right, you needed to bang your own gears. That's just the way it was. So I grew up literally power shifting everything. You name it, if, if I drove it, didn't matter if it was a, a Volkswagen bug or, or anything, it doesn't make any difference. Three on the tree, I didn't care. Power shift, power shift, power shift. Practice, practice, practice. Because we all wanted to be like Ronnie Socks, right? The lore back then was that Ronnie Socks could shift quicker than an automatic transmission. Which is not true, but it sounds really good and it makes for a great legend. So, you know, that was like the thing we all aspired to. I'm gonna shift like Ronnie Socks. Good luck with that. All right. So, as I said, it's archaic knowledge, but there's a lot of guys out there with manual transmissions or who want a manual transmission and want to know how to get the most of it. And the two concepts that we're talking about here, first, the burnout, which is very simple, okay? The burnout with a manual transmission without a line lock, because a lot of, a lot of the young guys don't even know what a line lock is. So a manual transmission burnout without a line lock and the power shift. So couple of disclaimers because you know you always have to do disclaimers right away i see people lining up to hit the keyboard right you gotta slick shift the transmission you gotta grind every other tooth off the synchros you gotta put dog box okay yeah no that's beyond the scope of this we're not talking about how to modify your your transmission for better shifts we're talking about just the average guy just trying to learn this stuff wrap his head around it all these are the things he needs to know that's all way advanced and then the second thing is that manual transmissions and breakage go hand in hand. So before you embark on this journey, you have to ask yourself, is my desire for performance greater than my fear of breaking parts? Because you're going to break parts, period, the end. So I, I see, I see the, the guys on the, the keyboard already too, right? He's telling people how to blow up their cars. No, I'm telling you how you bang shift, all right? It's, it's that simple. I'm telling you how you bang shift. I'm telling you how you do it and you know ahead of time that you're probably gonna break stuff because it's just the nature of the game, right? If, if you're afraid of breaking things, you shouldn't be playing with cars. It's that simple. All right, so let's do the first one is the burnout with a manual transmission. So uh, here's what you need to know about this. First, you need as much wheel spin and shock as possible. First shock, then wheel spin. Now, if you're at the drag strip, I know you're supposed to go around the water. If you've got street tires, you got to go around the water and do your burnout, you know, dry. Well, if you're doing it with a manual transmission, go through the water, okay? Go through the water, go to the end of the water. So you just got a little bit of water on the tires. Go to the end of the water, put it in first gear, rev it up, get it up to around 3,000 RPM or thereabouts. You want, you want a good amount of RPM going, all right? Because it's going to be the momentum of the back tire spinning while you're holding the brake. It's going to keep it still. Now you've only got two feet. You've got three pedals to operate and you've only got two feet. So the way you're doing this now is obviously your gas foot is on the gas your right foot's on the gas your left foot's on the clutch what you want to do is put it in gear snap the clutch out right just sidestep the clutch you know what I'm talking about right just sidestep it just let it slam up okay sidestep it and before the car has a chance to move forward get on the brake so it's got to be like one fluid motion right you're gonna be holding your rpm steady 3000 3500 like that 4000 holding your rpm steady you you sidestep the clutch and you go right for the brake pedal it's like one fluid motion right sidestep into the brake pedal now if you're not quick enough what will happen is the car will start to roll forward when it starts to roll forward it's going to take more brake pressure to hold it back 
So you want to try to keep the car from moving forward at all. As long as it hasn't started to move forward, you'll be able to hold it with a light foot on the brake. Now this works because, and this is a, on a, a typical production car, this works because approximately 80% of the braking power goes to the front wheels, about 20% to the back. So with a typical street type of car, with a stock type of braking system, this method works every time. You start to run into a problem when you've got cars that have altered braking systems, let's just say a much faster type of car where you've got skinny front wheels, a weight distribution that biases towards the back, and big back wheels, and so your braking bias is like 50-50 or thereabouts. So if you've increased the rear braking bias to compensate for the car's characteristics, well then this method isn't going to work. Probably won't work because as you're holding the brake, you're sending enough braking power to the back wheels that it's going to want to slow them down and not enough braking power to the front wheel so it's going to want to drive forward. But if you watch this one we did on with Bottle Rocket, this is a couple of years ago when the car still had a manual transmission in it, it had a four speed, you'll see that the car doesn't move, it just sits there. And then what sounds like a gear shift is not a gear shift. It broke a rocker arm halfway through the burnout. So when it sounds like I go from first to second, I'm not. It's just it broke a rocker arm and dropped a cylinder. So, but that's, that's the method of stationary burnout with a manual transmission and no line lock. Right? One fluid motion. Size up the clutch, go right for the brake. Try not, not to let the car move forward. And you've got to be really aggressive with the clutch. Like I said, just sidestep it. Don't try to pedal off it. Sidestep it. Because you want it to slam. When it slams, it shocks the wheels. They start spinning, and then you've got that split second to go from the clutch pedal to the brake and hold the car steady. Of course, from that point forward, if you want to play the burnout for distance thing, you can ease off the brake pedal a little bit, and then you could just keep that back tires burning for hundreds of feet. But that's a whole nother video. All right, now let's talk power shifting. All right, okay, power shifting. This takes a lot of practice. To get it right, it takes a lot of practice. I am out of practice because I mean it's been it's been at least 30 years or more since I was like heavy into running cars and the manual transmissions. It's like, I'm out of practice, but when I was a kid, oh, power shifting was my life, right? It was like power shift everything all the time, no matter what, you power shift in traffic. Uh, I'll get to that in a second, right? Because it sounds reckless and dangerous, but it's actually not. It's a good way to practice, but there's nothing dangerous about it. Um, so the purpose of power shifting is to have the engine RPM stay steady or actually increase slightly so that when the next gear is engaged the momentum of the spinning engine the spinning flywheel and all of that helps pull the car forward whereas if you shift by letting off the gas I right, see so you granny shift it right you know you take your foot off the gas you pull you know you push the clutch you pull the gear you let back off the clutch you give it gas you granny shift it and you let the engines momentum die down okay Power shifting, the purpose of power shifting is to keep the engine's RPM steady or even rise slightly between gears. So when you hit that next gear, all of that momentum helps slam the car forward. There's a significant, depending on the car really, there's a significant difference in ET. Like a good power shift, a good, let's, let's say, well, a run takes more than one power shift. But let's say, you know, three power shifts pulled off, you know, correctly is worth a lot of time i mean you are probably looking at like three or four tenths difference in drivers you know a really good driver versus somebody who just goes on a track for any shift and the difference is is huge so that's why if you're serious about this stuff and you got a manual tra manual transmission you this is a, a, a an art a skill that you need to learn all right so um let's talk about the different types of shifters that you're going to come across um all right the the from my experience 
the best overall shifters are these the internal rail type like you'd find on you know the T, t5s and these ax15s um, internal rail shifters they tend to be the best they tend to be the most accurate before they wear out when they wear out they start to get really sloppy they're floppy and everything else but when they're in good shape when they're before they're worn out they're usually the most accurate from a factory standpoint they're at least as good if not better than the typical factory manual transmission shifter like a Hurst let's say so that would be the, the, the other type is the external shifter the one that's mounted on the outside of the transmission and it has shift rods that operate it so those have extra articulations obviously because they've got to operate the shift rods as opposed to the internal rail which is much more direct which is what makes them more accurate the least um, the, the, the least accurate ones are like for front wheel drive cars you know where you've got many linkages and bushings and articulations and and, and stress points and or, or, you know okay yeah they can be really inaccurate um, but you work with what you have okay now going back talking about uh, external shifters like for instance you know on the traditional muscle car type of shifter that would have an 833 or, or a Muncie or you know that type of thing right uh, a typical Hurst shifter you have different levels of Hurst shifter there's the regular production Hurst shifter there, there's like the pickup truck sloppy Hurst shifter there's the competition plus Hurst shifter there's the full race Hurst shifter uh, different levels of quality give you different levels of accuracy for your power shift Accuracy becomes really important on your second to third gear shift. And this, this is assuming you're using a, a manual four or five speed that has an H pattern shifter, okay? So it's first to second is always a pull straight back. Not much accuracy needed for that. The accuracy has to be in you, in your head, okay? And, and, and in your, that mind-body thing, okay, Zen, right? But the second to third shift is diagonal. And because it's diagonal, everything has to be just right. Now, I want to talk about clutch or, or shifter adjustments for a second here. The, uh, obviously, there's really no adjustment you can make on an internal rail shifter. So pretty much what you get is what you get. If you're dealing with an external shifter, Hurst, right, that type of thing, if you're dealing with an external type of shifter, you can hedge your bets in terms of power shifting by, by adjusting the shift rods so that the one is slightly in front of the other. So that basically, as you're going forward on the shifter and you're finding that, that neutral area, well, if, if the two shift rods for the first, second, and third, fourth are just slightly staggered and beveled, you can, if you really want to get fancy about it, you take it apart and you can bevel the one, two, right so that when you're going forward in that diagonal pattern the bevel is guiding it towards three all right and like i said staggering them slightly so you can really create like a z-shaped shifter different levels that may want to be pursued in different ways okay but i'm just throwing this stuff out there for you all right, so again, the purpose is to maintain engine RPM or even perhaps pick up slightly, right? Uh, to help that momentum from the flywheel and the engine push the car forward through momentum as the next, ga next year engages. All right, so. Picture where you're going to go, right? I know, you know, here's first, here's second, okay? But you really have to see the shifts. I, I, I know this, this is gonna sound crazy, right? But you know, I've been doing this for a long time. You have to see the shift, you have to see it all the way through, and you have to follow all the way through. If in your mind, you're saying, I only have to move the shifter from here to here, well, that's all your arm is gonna do. So you have to actually visualize the shifter coming back past that point. Grab the shifter, right? Visualize moving past the point where second gear is and let your hand come off of it. So your arm isn't gonna try to stop. Full through, all the way through, okay? You don't have to let go of the shifter, but that's the idea. So it's gonna pull all the way through, like that. Now, loading first to second gear shift here's what you do and here's what you're gonna what you need to know about this 
too much force will hurt the transmission. You will bend the, the, the shift forks inside the transmission, right? Too much force is no good. You want just the right amount of force. How much is the right amount of force? Yeah, you just want it preloaded, okay? You want it preloaded. It's not gonna take a great deal of muscle to go from first to second. It's gonna take a lot of speed. It's gonna take it's gonna take some effort, but not a lot of muscle. So don't be prepared to put a lot of muscle on it. What you wanna do is you wanna just lightly pull back. Okay, you're coming to the top of first gear. You're getting ready to shift. As you're getting ready to shift, right? Whether you're doing it by, by the tack or the seat of your pants or your ears, when you're getting ready to shift, you start pulling back on the shifter. Do it firmly, but don't lock your hand on the shifter, right? Don't, don't tense, okay? Just start pulling back on the shifter. Not super hard, but um, deliberately, okay? When the time comes to shift, here's what you're gonna do now. Your foot, your gas pedal is gonna stay on the floor, right? You have to overcome the urge to lift the gas. Overcome that urge. Gas pedal on the floor. That's it. Foot halfway and half off the clutch, okay? So here's, here's, here's the, the clutch pedal, okay? And your foot wants to be like this. When the time comes to shift, foot on the floor, shifter preloaded, ready to move back, you wanna just push the clutch. Just fan the clutch like that, okay? Sidestep it, not really sidestep it, you wanna just ride your foot off the side of it. So you wanna push down and let it ride off, okay? All it takes is a break, a, 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 as soon as the tension is released between the engine and the transmission, the shifter is gonna to wanna to pop out of gear. You don't want to feel for it to pop out of gear. You want to already be, be pulling on it with the intent to go past second. So now you're going to foot on the floor, almost time to shift, fan the clutch, you're already pulling back, and pull back, right? Fan the clutch and pull back at the same time. Now I'm doing this, I'm doing this pretty fast. I'm, I'm probably doing this faster now than I would in real. Actually, if you watch videos of me power shifting this thing, I'm not as smooth with it on this. Those were the first times I drove this. Those are the very first shifts. I've gotten a little more acquainted with it now. And that's the other thing too, you have to realize that different shifters, different seating positions, different everything will kind of throw you a little bit. But like I said, see where it's going to go. See the path it's gonna go, right? And follow through past that because any hesitation any pause or hesitation, if you if you only intend to go this far, you may not have it all the way in by the time the clutch re-engages and the drivetrain tensions up again. In that case, you missed the gear. All right? So pull past. Fan the clutch, right? Pull past. All right, now, second to third. This is the one that everybody blows. This is the most difficult one. Some transmissions are very difficult, if not impossible, to power shift at higher RPM because of the ratio differences. Uh, too, too low a first gear uh, compared to the second gear. Like, like it's an extremely wide ratio transmission. The speed of the gears is, too, the difference in speed of the gears is too much for that speed shift to happen. So this, this really depends on what kind of transmission you have. This one actually has a wide ratio, but at the same time, it does power shift relatively easy. I haven't blown a third gear shift on this thing yet. So, but there are others like, for instance, the Chrysler 833, the overdrive four speed. Ah, oh, what a nightmare. You're gonna blow at least two out of three or three out of four shifts you try with that thing. It's just the way it is. Even if you slick shift it, you'll still have that problem. But third gear is diagonal and it's the same thing as first, okay? Or when you're shifting first to second. When you go to shift second to third, picture the point past where the shifter is gonna go. So the shifter's gonna go here, right? But, but don't look at that point, don't think about that point. Think about this point up here on the dashboard, okay? Where the shifter would hit. If it, if it didn't stop for the next gear and you just kept going for infinity, where would this ball end up? It would end up at the dashboard, okay? So that's where you wanna point yourself. That's where your intent has to be. Your intent has to be at the dashboard and it has to be to move your arm right from here to the dash okay you don't want to you don't want to focus on where third gear is 
you want to focus beyond third gear and push past third gear like that and do it deliberately your third gear your third gear shift is done with the palm okay you do it with your palm <laughs> Right? You put the ball in, in, in like the, the, the base of, of your palm, okay? So that as you're pushing forward on it, there can't be any, right? It's not gonna, your hand is gonna slide off, not until the shifter reaches a positive stop. When it reaches the positive stop, now your hand is free to slide off. This is the way I've always done it. I'm sure you can hold on to the ball and, and get good results. Push to the dashboard and let it come off, right? Bang, like that, right? Foot always on the floor. Fan the clutch, just like that. There's your third gear. And then fourth gear is the same as first to second. I'm having flashbacks to the 70s. I swear to God, right? So, all right, now practicing. Practice, 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 practice. You say to yourself, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go to jail and, and, and I'll be dead if I try to practice that all the time everywhere. No, you don't have to even, you don't have to speed, you don't have to do anything reckless, you don't have to do anything crazy to practice your power shifting. You could do it in regular traffic. You could do it alongside a cop, and a cop would never even know you were doing it. All you're going to do is, as you're driving through traffic, okay, instead of letting off the gas, right, and synchro shifting, okay, all you're going to do is, as, you, as you're driving forward at normal traffic speed, 20, 30 miles an hour, whatever it happens to be, with your, with your foot in its normal position, before the engine RPM, given the speed and the throttle position, before the engine RPM levels out and allows the shifter to just pop out, power shift it at that point, okay? Just pull back because the shifter won't come, the shifter will not disengage from gear if the engine is still climbing, if the RPM is still climbing, and just fan the clutch, boom. Right? And power shift. Just power shift all the time, everywhere you go, right? And eventually it starts to become, you know, a, a second nature. It becomes a zen thing. You don't have to speed. You don't have to go crazy. If you got it right, you'll chirp a tire, but I mean, nobody, nobody's going to care about that, right? So just practice all the time. Practice all the time. And obviously try to get into as many different stick shift cars as possible to try to get the feel for each of them, you know, because they're all a little bit different. And you want to master them. You want to be able to say, you want it to be sort of, no matter what car you get into, you, you got this covered, right? Practice. Uh, okay, that was, I don't even know if any of that made any sense to tell you today. I think I just spent most of that video rambling. But you may have gotten something out of it. And if you did, go, go forth and bang gears. Right? It's the American way. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.